on this Christmas morning that we celebrate on Sunday, of course. This is our time to celebrate the coming of the Messiah, the baby in the manger. When we come together this morning and as we are in remembrance of the birth of the Christ child, this was God's promise to be redeemed by Him. Turn with me, if you would, to Luke in chapter 2 this morning. Many of you already know the Christmas story, but you know, it's always good to have that reminder. But I wanted to entitle this this morning, A Night to be Remembered. A night to be remembered. Because you know, this was a time whenever the supernatural things were happening in a natural world. And as if we were in the natural world at that time, we see how that in verse 1 it says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus unto all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Caesar, or Sirius, was governor over Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up to, Jer to Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Let us pray. Father God, this morning as we come together in celebration, Father, of the birth of Your Son, the Savior of the world, Father, we know that You had this plan from the foundations of the world. And Father, is that You have brought it to fruition. We know that even the other Scriptures, God, that still yet are to be revealed unto us, Lord, that they will come to pass because You have spoken it. Father, let us come to a place of belief and understanding this morning. If there are any here that have never asked Jesus to be their Lord and personal Savior, this might be the day of salvation for them, or today is the day of salvation. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. As we see this, David had to go to the city of Bethlehem, the city of David, because he was of that lineage. We've already spoken about that in past weeks and how that we see the prophecies of the Old Testament were being fulfilled. And as that they were being fulfilled, it was happening right before them. But all of a sudden in verse 5, and to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Mary was at the point she was ready to give birth, but she still had to be there being of that house and lineage of David. Verse 6, So it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. They had went to Bethlehem because this is what they had to do because of them being taxed because of what was going on. But yet we see here how that when they were there, everybody from that area and who was of that lineage was coming into that place. And as if they were, they couldn't just go down to the economy inn or they couldn't go to the hotel and just get a place because they had already been taken because there was no room for them in the inn. So they had to find a place for her to be able to deliver Jesus into this world and be birthed into this. So they go and they find a place in a manger to where that they were able to have the child. But wasn't this wonderful? Because you know what? Our Lord and Savior who came in humility has lifted up in honor. Amen? As if we see Jesus born into a lowly place, yet we know that He has been exalted on high. Amen? You see, Mary, when she had her firstborn son, as if He was birthed into this world, when He came, there was the expectations of those that were looking for the coming of the Messiah. But yet in verse 8 it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. So we see here that there were those that were out even in the fields close by. 
Johnny brought to my attention this morning in Sunday school how that even at that time there were those whenever the shepherds, this is where the, the baby sheep or the sacrificial sheep was to be born and kept and raised that would ultimately be sacrificed in Jerusalem. What a better place for Jesus to be born, the Lamb of God. Even John the Baptist made the comment, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world to be born in that very area to where the, the lambs that were being in preparation for sacrifice in Jerusalem were to be sacrificed. How prophetic is that even in and of itself that Jesus was born there? There again, starting in verse 9, and it says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Now, get a picture of this in your minds. You're out there in the field. You're watching over your sheep. You don't want any of them little critters to get away. So you're out there. You're still tending the flocks. It's at night, and all of a sudden, quiet shining all about you. There wasn't even airplanes at that time. What was this light that was coming down from heaven all of a sudden? No wonder they were scared to death because they didn't know what was going on. Some of us here today could attest if we saw a light out in the middle of a field coming down from above, you know, we might think, what is it? But maybe it's a helicopter. Maybe it's a plane. Maybe it's something because in our time we have the capability to be above in the sky. But yet then they really didn't. Not to this degree. So as that they were out there in the field and this angel appears unto them and the light that was shining round about them when the angel came and appeared it says that the Lord shone round about them the glory of the Lord. All this light was coming down and the angel said unto them fear not. Do you know when the holy angels appear, this is one of the first things that we see. Don't be afraid. Fear not. They bring words of comfort to where that we are not overwhelmed. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Notice that this was not just simply to the Jews. It wasn't just simply to a segmented area of society, but that all people. This was for everyone, still yet today. Jesus for everyone across the earth and across the world. Amen. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves the little children. Yes. Amen. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight because, you see, He came for all people. The angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. That's why Johnny and I are so excited this morning is because we're still experiencing that great joy of the good tidings that that angel brought many years ago. We can still experience that within our hearts. And even as I preached last week, the king is coming. Well, guess what? Yes, we celebrate the entry of the birth of Jesus Christ. But I want you to know that he is coming for the second advent and we should be excited about that as well. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This was the Messiah, the Savior of the world. That He had been delivered. That He had came to deliver His people. You see, the thing is, is this is prophecy that was taking place. Actually, turn with me, if you would, to John in chapter 7, verse 40 through 43. You're going to see something here to where even Jesus and what was taking place in His ministry, they were still questioning, and there were those that questioned. But in verse 40 of that chapter, it says, And many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. So they were still looking for the prophet. They were still confused on who it was. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? You see, this was the problem that they had with that is because they were considered Nazarenes. They were of Galilee, but yet ultimately their lineage went back to that city of David. That's why they had to go back there and be taxed. There in verse 40, Hath not the Scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? 
So there was a division among the people because of him. Yeah, and you see, that's why he was from Nazareth, from Galilee, but ultimately he was born in Bethlehem because he was of the lineage of David, which he had to be in order to fulfill the prophecy that he was of the seed of David, that he had came out of the root of Jesse, Amen. the father of David. Amen. So the prophecies had to match up and they were looking for that. In Malachi, or in Micah, excuse me, in Micah and chapter 5, I'm only going to read verse 2 here, but to where it says this, because this is where the prophecy in which they were looking at came from. It says in verse 2, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrath, thou that art beast little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel whose going forth hath been from old, from everlasting. Do you know He has no beginning? He has no end. And this is the prophecy which brings Him forth of where that the Christ child was going to be born. The ruler. Or though, or though He would feed them. Turn with me if you would to Matthew in chapter 2 as well. I wanted to go there for just a moment. Matthew chapter 2. Verse 4 through 6. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. So you see here, they were looking to the prophecies even to find out for the three wise men or the wise men that brought the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh where that they needed to go to find Him. It was at Bethlehem. Verse 6, it says, And thus Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not thou least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You see, this is what the Christ child was coming into the world to do. Those that were looking knew what His purpose was even at that time. In Isaiah and chapter 9, if you'll go with me there real quick, then we'll get back to Luke. But in Isaiah and chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, we read this last week, but it brings it to a little more clarity where you see, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. We see here how unto us a child is given and what that His purpose, even the prophet there Isaiah, was saying this is what His purpose is. This is what He's going to do. He's going to rule and reign and it will be an everlasting kingdom. Hallelujah. Every kingdom, even though it may be great and as much as I am very much um, a supporter of the great United States of America, at some point... Every kingdom has came to a place where it fell or changed or did something. When it comes to the kingdom of Christ, there's not going to be any changes. He's going to rule. He's going to reign with the rod of iron. And it's going to be the way He says it, whether you like it or not. Amen. Amen? And you see, when we look at this here and we see that this child, He comes as that infant. He came in loneliness of earth. But yet He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And when He comes, He came to those shepherds that were out there in the field. And as they were out there in the field, and this glory of the Lord began to shine about them, and then the angels began to say unto them, To fear not, behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
they begin to listen closely because I'm sure that those shepherds knew and understood exactly what the angel was saying in verse 12. And it says, And thus shall be a sign, and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. This is going to be your sign. How many of you know Bill Engel? He's a comedian. He has a, here's your sign. Well, guess what? That's what the angel was saying to these shepherds. Here's your sign. You go find this. A babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. It wasn't even in how many of us have had our children and we get nice little baby gifts and things and nice little outfits for our children. But yet not Jesus. What He had, He just had a bunch of rags wrapped around Him to keep Him warm and to keep His arms in. So we see even in this here, this is going to be your sign. This babe is going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. And get this, all of a sudden, suddenly, there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, good will to all toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now and go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Do you know what that tells me? They believe. And not only that they believed, they acted on the belief in which knowing that the Lord had revealed this unto them. Woo! When it talks about this heavenly host, man, there were an innumerable amount of angels or angelic beings that began to praise God at this time. When the King of kings and the Lord of lords made entry into this world, there was worship that went on. There was praising God that took place. And these shepherds that were out in the field, they were able to go and say, we have experiences, and here's our sign. There's that baby. And they went over and they found Jesus, and they were able to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, the only one that we are to worship in this world is God. Even though there have been many men in the past and even Satan himself that has wanted to set himself up to be God, I want you to know that there is only one true and living God. Amen. And Jesus Christ came in the form of flesh, but yet He was not only 100% man, He was 100% God. He Amen. was the Son of God the Father. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen? But He came in human flesh that He might redeem us. He had to die that we might live everlasting. But you know what? He didn't stay dead. Amen? He came out of that grave. Three days later, He came out of that grave. And He was alive because He overcame death, hell, and the grave and was victorious. But this Christ child, this baby that we see, this was royalty. We still today need to understand, you know, we talk about the big man upstairs. Or we talk about Jesus, He's my friend. And He is. But He's royalty. We need to understand that this is the child that was birthed into this world to become the leader of all time. Past time. Everlasting. Amen that He is royalty and that we need to give Him the honor that He is due. I mentioned to you the other day, or some of you maybe, that there was this scene in this place to where they had a menorah, they had all these different Christmas things. for things. But for Christ, or for the actual act of Christmas, they had a little bitty manger about this size, overshadowed by all these other earthly, worldly type of holiday seasonal things. But what is really the importance is that Jesus is the real reason for the season. And we need to remember that. At this Christmas time, whenever that our grandchildren or our children or even we may be opening gifts up, we need to remember that the true gift that was given was Jesus. Amen. And He was wrapped up. Amen. Amen. We just have to unwrap Him in our hearts. Maybe that's the thing. Some of us still have Him wrapped up 
in those swaddling clothes and we need to loose him and let him free in our lives so that he can truly be the God of gods and the King of kings and the Lord of lords that he truly is, that he wants to be in our lives. Amen. Amen. If somebody sees something good in me, that's Jesus. Amen. I want people to see Jesus in me even though they may see physically this little short fat guy, Robert Nelson, you know, hey, that's okay. But it's plump. That's right, plump. Thank you, Johnny, for that correction. Jesus Amen. is what I really want people to see. When I open my heart up to others and have care and concern, they see Jesus. When I open my home up or when I open everything up that I might have, it's Jesus that comes forward. That that's who they know. There's something different about that guy. I know he's a little strange, but you know what? I see Jesus in him. Amen. For every one of us, I've already received a gift this morning. Tim and Brandy are here. Amen. I didn't even know they were coming from Amen. Florida. Amen. Amen. We've got people all the way from Florida here today at church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But those angels came and worshiped and rejoiced. <coughs> And whenever that they finally ascended back up and the shepherds were left back in the dark with the sheep, they were like, let's go to town. Got to tell somebody. You know, when you have Jesus in your heart, when you really experience, I'm going to get off track here. When you really have an encounter with Christ, you can't keep it in. When you really have Jesus inside of you and, and you just got to tell somebody something, sure, we need to use a little wisdom in how that we go about it, but yet when we truly have Christ, we need to share Him. We don't need to hold Him to ourselves. We need to allow other people to see that He is alive and well and He's inside of me. Amen? Because we live in a world who that's what people really need is Christ transforming their lives into what He wants them to become. Instead, they don't want that anymore. They want technology. They want this. They want that. We've hardened our hearts so much that the world won't even want to look at us as we're, we're the weird people. We're the freaks. Well, praise God, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Praise God. We should be different. Amen. Amen. Amen? We should be radical in some of our things that we do whenever that we go and do things for people just because we're doing it for the goodness and mercy of God. Not because we're reaping anything from it for ourselves, but it's the kingdom of God that is getting the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Woo, praise God, I'm telling you, these angels, when they went up, the shepherds were left standing there saying, let's go to town. we got to tell somebody. Let's go see what these angels have proclaimed to us that God has revealed that we might go and be a part of this. Do you know they're still a part of that Christmas story? And who knows, when we get to heaven, we may be able to meet these individuals who actually were there at that time whenever that they saw the baby Jesus in the manger. Whenever that they were able to come and worship before Him at that time. Because you see, it didn't matter that He was just newly born. He was who He was, and He is who He still is today. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, He came from before. He may, we may see Him 2,000 years ago in this world, but yet He is from everlasting to everlasting. He has always been. The, been. the Scriptures say that He came from the bosom of the Father. Amen? Amen? You see, our God, He is one. But yet in that, there is the Trinity aspect of there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You see it all through the Old Testament, and you definitely see it revealed in the New Testament. Amen. He was God in the flesh. Emmanuel, that's what it means. Woo. Wow, no one, I get excited. I get ex I'm not ashamed that I get excited. Amen. Because I believe this. Amen. Nate, I love that. He is really getting into these messages. Amen. Praise God. But they go to town and they begin to say in verse 16, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, saying with 
of which was told them concerning this child. So they let Joseph and Mary know, look, there was a bunch of angels that showed up out in the field with us and we're over here because they told us that the Christ child had been born. Amen. Now, I didn't want to take time this morning to go back into some of the other things that we've already rehashed in the last couple of weeks. But you see, they already knew what this child was. Mary had to submit herself to the angel and what the angel said, that the Holy Spirit would come on her and she would conceive. This would be a holy thing. This would be the Son of God. Amen. And you see, so when they saw this and heard this, and it goes on there in verse 18, and all they that have heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She kept all these things that took place even in her heart at that time because I'm sure that she was still amazed of what was really happening and what was really taking place. It was almost overwhelming for her. She could not understand. We have modern medicine today. We have technology that I tell you what, it's just beyond the minds of most people. We just use it and do it, but yet it is so in-depth. And at that time, there wasn't all of that. But now, supernatural things are happening. Now things are taking place. I'm having people show up at the manger scene telling me that they just saw a bunch of angels and that these angels have let them know that the Christ child has been born and this is a sign unto you. The babe's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. You go over there and find out what we told you is true. So they go and they're there. Now Mary is receiving all this and she's pondering it in her heart. And the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it were told unto them. Turn with me if you would to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Jesus came to deliver His people. He came to deliver us. We know John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe upon Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to know that this Christ child that we celebrate, that we receive in our hearts, He came to deliver us from what the devil had had us in which was bondage and the bondage of sin. But starting in verse 7 of chapter 3 in 1 John, it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. But get this quote here. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might deliver the works or destroy the works of the devil. Let me read that again. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might deliver, destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came, was to destroy the works of the devil. Even as we're talking here, as John says, look, don't let anybody see you. Those that do righteous, they're righteous. Those that live in sin, they're of the devil. I want you to know that Jesus came to deliver us from our sin. Amen. He did not come that we might remain in our sin. Amen. He came to deliver us from our sin. We cannot do that of ourselves. That's why it takes Jesus coming into our heart and asking forgiveness and asking Him to cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what the Scriptures tell us. Amen. That is something to shout about. Going on into verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For this seed, his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, that the children of the and the children of the devil, whosoever doth not righteousness is not righteous, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen. For this is the message 
that ye have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. That we should love one another. Now why did I bring that Scripture up in this message this morning of Jesus being born in the manger? Of His birth. Because I want you to know it's for this purpose that the Son of God was manifest. This purpose was the Son of God birthed into this world that He might destroy the works of the devil. Because I want you to know the devil still wants to take part in your life. But God wants to give you life through His Son, Jesus Christ. As Johnny comes and as Jeremy comes back to the piano, open your hearts up this morning. Open your hearts to the Spirit and the presence of God in knowing that He can take you and change you. Well, I've been this way for years. I don't see myself changing. Well, if that's your attitude, well, you might not. But when you let Jesus in, when you truly allow the living Christ to come into your life, the things you can't change, He will. He will change. Because you can't do it on your own. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. We are saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. He has created us unto good works, but we're not saved by our works. We're saved by putting our faith in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. As Johnny comes and leads us, if the Spirit has spoken to you this morning, and is calling you to come, come to Him today. Because He is alive and He is well. And He is ready to receive you unto His Son.